you. So uh, this is joint work with uh, Zeynep and thankfully Annemarie already introduced the main preliminaries we need for this talk. Just a brief recap. So we, we, we focus in this talk on, on artificial frameworks like the one shown here on, on, the, on the bottom and mainly on admissible sets, but also some, some other semantics. So, for instance, so admissible sets just as a brief recall. Here, uh, this is a, a set of arguments that, uh, which is conflict free and each argument inside the set is uh, defended by, by the set. And also mainly focus on a credulous viewpoint in this, in this talk and then the people have uh, more results. Okay, so now uh, Anne already talked about how an argumentation, uh, so, so ways of actually obtaining argumentation frameworks of, of, for instance via structured argumentation or so that, that is uh, formal recipes that actually instantiate argumentation frameworks. For instance, you've seen uh, one in the previous talk or, or one in the invited talk. And now um, one thing that might come up at least in some instantiations that the, the, some of the instantiations can lead to a rather, to rather a large arg argumentation framework, so a large number of arguments, which for instance, due to that, uh, for instance, rule derivations can, can correspond to um, arguments in these structured frameworks. And large argumentation frameworks, they can potentially uh, be a barrier, so for instance, computationally, but also to actually understand the, uh, the argumentation frameworks. For instance, if a user sees a, a huge argumentation framework or even a, a large admissible set, it can pose a barrier in certain cases to actually understand such uh, large structures. And now a research question is, how can we actually support via, for instance, formal methods, uh, explanations on these um, um, argument structures. And we are, of course, not the first one to actually consider this question and related research questions. So uh, in the interest of time, we will not go over the related work, but there are many other formal approaches to support explanations. And what, uh, what we did here is actually, we considered um, um, a promising approach in uh, related fields or in, in other fields where we have complex systems in the, the, uh, the approach of, um, of abstraction. And more concretely in this talk, we will consider a, a form of existential abstraction on argumentation frameworks via clustering of the arguments. Okay. Um, so uh, for, uh, for most of the talk, I will walk you through the main concepts via examples. Let's go, uh, go back again to a, to a simple argumentation framework here on the, on the top. And now a one convenient way of actually clustering arguments is via, via mapping, so here on the bottom here, uh, which maps arguments into clusters. <clears throat> And here in the example, for instance, the three arguments on the left, they are clustered or mapped into this cluster head X. So head X con contains these three arguments A, B, C. And the, uh, the argument D and E, they are mapped into clusters just containing themselves. So they, then we call them singleton clusters because there's just one argument inside them. And for clarity and for convenience, they, we then identify this cluster uh, with the argument itself. So which means that D is actually mapped to itself and E is mapped to itself, while the other three are mapped to a bigger cluster. And now the, uh, the existential flavor of the existential abstraction comes into play when considering the attack relation on, on, on the resulting clustering, which we call then the clustered argumentation framework. So there is an attack from one cluster here to another cluster here. If there exists um, one argument on, uh, uh, in the cluster on the left side, uh, that attacks uh, one argument in the cluster on the right side. So for instance, here in the original argumentation framework, C attacks D. So that, that's why uh, if you apply this mapping here, then the, the cluster um, head X attacks the argument D, so the singleton cluster D here on the right side. Okay, now a question that arises is of course, uh, uh, how can we interpret it, interpret such clusters, uh, such clustered argumentation frameworks? Well, what, uh, what we follow here is the approach that we actually um, look for counterparts of the, let's say, classical argumentation framework semantics. So uh, that is, we, we abstract also the semantics uh, and lead to, to new semantics on the, on the clustered argumentation frameworks. So uh, uh, such an uh, abstract semantics, this is for instance noted here by, by this head uh, a sigma function here, and it takes input now in a clustered argumentation framework. So for instance, one like this one here, where we have three clustered arguments or three clusters, so head X, E and E. Uh, and it, uh, it also takes input the, the mapping. So for instance, that we know that here there are three arguments inside the cluster, this is a singleton. Uh, cluster and this is also a singleton cluster. So it, it, it turns out to in particular be important uh, which clusters are singleton and which are not singleton, which the, uh, with the intuition behind it. So if you have a singleton cluster, then it means we did not actually abstract anything. So it's still a concrete argument. Okay, and then uh, uh, one important thing that we require from the abstract semantics, for instance, if we abstract admissible sets uh, uh, and, and have an, uh, let's say, abstract admissible set semantics, and require that each 
Uh, original admissible set, for instance, here for, for this framework here, is preserved in, in a way in the new semantics. And pre preservation here means that if something is an, an admissible set in the original framework, then if you apply the, uh, the mapping on each argument individual inside the mapping, then this should be part of the new semantics. So for instance, I uh, do, do have time for, uh, for, for, more, for more detailed example here, but if you consider these three uh, admissible sets here, so if you apply the mapping, so each is actually mapped onto, uh, into the same cluster. This me means uh, this leads to, to the set on the uh, bottom left here. And, the, uh, and by our, our requirement, if we define an, an, an abstraction of admissible set, it must contain by this requirement, uh, this particular set and the others shown here. And now I will give you one definition, so there are actually several definitions that achieve this property of being abstracting, but I will I give you one and will, uh, so the end of the talk, if there's time, I will give you more justification why we chose this particular one. So here, this, this is on the top here, we, uh, in, in a sense, as usual in classical uh, admissible set, we have a conflict-free part and we have a uh, defense part. So here, it, it, it turns out that what's important for the, for the abstract admissible sets that uh, whether something is a singleton cluster, so these are, these are denoted here like this, so this means the clusters contain only one argument, so they are still concrete, or whether they are uh, uh, um, uh, not singleton clusters. Okay, so conflict three means that uh, something is, an, uh, uh, is deemed an, an absolute admissible set. It, uh, so if it's an absolute admissible set, it must hold if there are two arguments, two clusters inside, and they're actually singleton clusters, so concrete ones, there cannot be a, a, an attack between them. And for the defense part, this is actually illustrated here on the, on, on the bottom. If you have a concrete argument inside the set, so this one here, and if it's, if it's attacked by something, it can be concrete, so a singleton or a non-singleton cluster, doesn't matter. In both cases, we require that there's something inside the abstract admissible set that defends it, and again, it can be a, a singleton, so a concrete cluster or a non-singleton cluster. <clears throat> But actually, a non single clusters can be added to an absolute admissible sets in any way. So they, we do not restrict them. Okay, and now, okay, now we have this, uh, this kind of absolute semantics. And now, it, so if you, if you look at um, the uh, concrete until frame from before and two uh, abstractions via two different mappings. So this is the, in the middle one, you see them, the mapping from before. And here you see uh, another mapping. Then we see that all of the admissible sets are actually in both cases they are preserved via this definition I just gave you. So here you see the, the absolute admissible set for the middle one and for the lower one. And now let's consider uh, uh, here an, 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 an important aspect. So for instance, if you consider this particular uh, set here, so via the definition I just gave you in this particular cluster, this framework, D is actually admissible, so abstractly admissible, but actually there is no, so there doesn't exist an, an admissible set on the concrete ambition framework we, we started with, that actually, if you apply the mappings, if you apply the abstraction, that again leads to this D. In this case, we say that D is spurious. So why is spurious? Because it, it, it just occurred, uh, just emerged via the, uh, via the abstraction, but there is no concrete admissible set. And if such a thing does not occur with respect to specific semantics, we say that uh, uh, the corresponding cluster framework is, uh, with respect to admissible sets, actually faithful to, to, to the original artificial framework. And this is the case here in the middle one. Okay, now, um, since this is a rather short talk, I, I want to spend now some time on, on illustration, what you can actually do, do with such an abstraction. So what is the use, use case here? And here we'll focus on credence acceptance of arguments. Uh, for skeptical reasoning is actually a bit different, but the, for that, uh, yeah, come to the poster or talk to me or, or look at the paper. Uh, but for the credence case, I, I just took an, an example from, from the literature. So an, uh, an example by Henry Bracken regarding some, some criminal case. And he actually defined an extended artificial framework, but I applied a, uh, a direct translation to obtain an artificial framework. But I just want to illustrate the concept here. So, so let's say we actually want to uh, co consider um, the, the credulous acceptance of the argument A. So actually here, A, the argument A is credulously accepted. Uh, so now the, uh, the approach, uh, uh, how we uh, utilize the abstraction is that we first uh, start with an initial course abstraction actually this one here, which of course that doesn't give any information, but, what, uh, but this is just the starting point. So the starting point is we cluster everything into one, argo in one clustered argument. And here, of course, we, okay, we don't see much here. Uh, actually, I, I forgot to mention this self-attack here comes from the, because there is some attack happening inside, so that's why the clustered argument attacks itself. 
okay, and now uh, in, in our approach, we, we let the user then decide on which argument do we want more information. And in our case, this is A, because this is the argument we, we are mainly interested in. And then we approach this by uh, making this particular argument concrete. So we make it a singleton and keep everything still abstract, so still uh, clustered in one, in one big cluster. But actually now, uh, in this particular situation, uh, the, the, the set containing just A is actually spurious with respect to admissible sets. Uh, set. so, uh, so why? Because in the original argumentation framework, given by, by Henry or by this translation, then there is no admissible set containing A. And now what we do is, uh, in actually the, uh, the next thing uh, was computed in a, uh, by our prototype in an automatic sense. So we actually refine the abstraction until we reach a faithful uh, clustered argumentation framework. And this is uh, one possible result, actually, the one computed by, by our prototype. But in general, there can be different refinement strategies. And now what I want to highlight here in the last, uh, last minute or so here uh, is that here we have two abstract miscible sets that ca can be used in a sense to, um, to gain insights why this particular argument is actually credibly accepted within this particular uh, uh, framework or the cluster framework. So here, for instance, this admissible set actually tells us because of faithfulness, there exists, also, also, no, also, there, the, there is a corresponding admissible set on the original framework. So why? Because there is no abstract, so no abstraction was, was done here. So all of these are actually singletons, so all of these are concrete arguments. So it means that this set also occurs as admissible in the original one. And the other one is also an interesting one because it says that there is an admissible set in the original admission framework uh, containing A and C and something inside the cluster, but the details of which have actually, actually been abstracted away. So if you're not interested actually in this part, then we can see, okay, we have A and C and something inside the cluster, but the, uh, what, uh, what exactly is, is actually used for defending in this case, actually C against the argument two here was abstracted away. So in this way, together with the clustering and the, the abstract miscible semantics, we can in a sense gain insights um, uh, uh, what parts are in a sense needed or abstract some parts that we don't want to see. Okay, so now since the time is running short, I will already go to the, to the main summary and conclusion. So what we did in our work, we, we, we gave a formal definition of this kind of extension abstraction via clustering, the absolute semantics or concepts of conflict-free, admissible and stable extensions. Uh, it turned out that the other semantics, the, so while possible in some way to abstract them, it's in, uh, so okay, I forgot to mention that um, the, the definition we gave for, for these three is actually in a sense optimal because if you consider any semantics that abstracts admissible sets, all of them um, actually include the, the absolute admissible sets that we gave as a definition. So in a sense, ours is in a uh, our definition is in a sense optimal. And optimality is not so easy for other semantics like complete. We also have some complex results and I want to particularly highlight a, a, a available prototype where you can play around with. And if you have some questions, then please go ahead now or later in the poster session. Thank you very much for your attention.